Okay. I wanted to do an unboxing today of a Bushnell TRS-25 from Amazon.com uh, because honestly I don't see many if any of these on uh, YouTube unboxings of the TRS-25 which is a very popular red dot uh, hope this unboxing works the way my phone is. I got it set on this crappy little tripod. I'm not sure this is really going to work, but I'm going to try it. Uh, first of all, let's talk price and shipping and all that. I got this off of Amazon.com, of course, for uh, this is an unbelievable price of $42.99. This was just a few days ago. It was actually, this is Thursday, the November 30th, as I type it. As I record this, and so the preceding Friday is when I ordered it, which was Black Friday, I believe. And uh, so that may have been one reason why the price was low, as it was $42.99. Let me repeat that again: was how much I paid for the TRS-25. Now the actual order came to like $57 and a little change because I had to get this riser to go with it. Which I got the one inch UTG high profile riser mount. This scissors saddle height one inch. I'm hoping that's going to work. I haven't installed any of this on my gun yet. I'm hoping that's going to give me a nice lower one third co witness, the one inch uh, mount, and I'll let you know on that. It's between that and the .83 inch mount, so I'm pretty sure it'll work. The mount was like nine something, I don't remember the exact price, but nine dollars and sixty-five cents or nine dollars and seventeen cents or something in that order. Combined with the forty-two ninety-nine for the red dot and then some shipping. I mean not shipping tax. It was free shipping. But it was the slow shipping because I don't have Amazon Prime. Uh and so the total order did come to like fifty-seven dollars, pushing sixty bucks, but still. Uh still a great deal. Now, uh, my dad was the first one who told me about this site, uh, right after I got my AR, he said something like, yeah, just go on, uh, Amazon and get the Bushnell TRS-25, it's like 70 bucks, you know, and it's a good site, so I took, you know, my dad's word's good enough for me on that, and, uh, you know, and he's a guy who's got probably $1,000 optics on his stuff, but, uh, but at that time, the TRS-25 was probably running about more like 60-ish, you know, he said 70, but and then I've been watching the price, it's kind of, kind of constantly decreasing, and it's been 50s, it's been in the 50s a lot, and then lately it even hit 49.99, and then like around Black Friday I saw it for 45.99, and I put it in my cart, but I just, eh, didn't quite pull the trigger, finally when it hit 42.99, that's just too good to pass up, so I bought it. Thing is, I've been spending too much money lately. Like, I just bought an Xbox One X, which was $460. I got it with some discounts, but still, ran me $460, bucks, so on and so forth. And I've been getting kind of undisciplined, where just whenever I want something, I'll buy it. And so, it's been hitting my bank account. I have like $330 left in my credit card I still need to pay off. I don't like to carry a credit card balance. So all those things factored into that I've been looking at and, and wanting this site really bad for like three months. I mean, I just, even as low priced as it is, I just haven't pulled the trigger. I just keep telling myself, hey man, pay off your credit card first. You can't keep buying toys, you know. Even though it's only 60, 70 bucks after tax and shipping and whatever. And with the mount, you know, that's 60, 70 bucks you need to pay on your credit card balance. But finally, I'm almost to the point where I can pay off my credit card this week or next. I'll be good financially, basically. <laughs> Caught up, so to speak. Paid all the bills. So I just couldn't pass up this good of a deal. Um, so yeah. Uh, like I said, word is it's a good site. And it's a good price on Amazon there. I believe it's $49.99 right now, last I checked. The, the Amazon's kind of weird. Their price will kind of jiggle around constantly. Like... It's never a solid price, like $52.99 for long. It'll drop to $52.17, $55.06. I believe it's all controlled, actually, on Amazon, the pricing by an algorithm. I'm not sure what factors go into the algorithm, but 
Uh, I think one of the big ones is what third-party sellers are selling it for. And Amazon wants to make sure that they either have the lowest price or close to it within reason, I think. So I think a lot of times when it goes down, it's because some other seller was offering it for a real low price. So Amazon can sort of price matches them in a way. Like I said, I believe it's all just computer controlled by an algorithm. It's not a person putting in that price, and it's not a stable price. But it's been around the 50 bucks generally 55 52 like I said it may have been a Black Friday thing that it was 42.99 when I got it it was 49.99 shortly after that you know I saw it for 45.99 the first time I put it in my cart but anyways it uh, I got the free shipping which again I'm the person who doesn't have prime in the world <laughs> and uh, I ordered it on Friday and it, it arrived it's claimed it was going to arrive by, well first it claimed when I ordered I believe that it will arrive by Thursday, November 30th to Friday, December 1st. Something like that. I think either when I ordered or after I ordered or it, it gave me a more concrete delivery date of it said arriving Friday, December 1st. It took out the Thursday. But I have some experience with this free Amazon shipping which is typically UPS sure post which is where some UPS uses the postal sir, the post office, you know, the USPS to deliver it to, to to your house the last mile so to speak. Somehow like UPS ships it to the post office, the post office brings it to your house and it's cheaper. A lot of people bash the post office, but I've always had good experience with the post office. And I really like them. And they're the cheapest. You know if you sell on eBay like I do, they're the cheapest. Nobody else can touch them. So people love to bash the post office, but it's actually a pretty good deal. I'm a conservative, and I noticed a lot of conservatives love to bash the post office as an example of government bureaucracy and incompetence. Well, that's wrong anyway, because the post office operates on a system where they have to break even. So they're not, you know, like any other government organization where they just have a blank check. You know, they, they have to operate like a real business, really. So I don't know why conservatives, I think it's misguided, are always bashing the post office for political reasons. And like I said, in my experience, it's generally been really good and generally very cheap and very efficient and fast. Well, not necessarily efficient, but but anyways. Yeah, so uh, and it did end up, the tracking was wonky though. It kept... Like it showed, it just it was a little weird. It kept showing different stuff, like that it had arrived in my city. Then it said something, it arrived at a carrier facility. And it didn't say the city. And that was after it had already said it arrived and was ready for delivery. It was real buggy. I don't know what was going on with it. And I halfway expected it. And it, it came a day early, though, long story short. It came on Thursday, November 30th, when they said it was coming on Friday. So that was nice. I kind of, like I said, I half expected it to because of the way it was tracking, even though the tracking was all bugged out, so I couldn't tell when the hell it was coming in a way. But, like, it arrived, I think, in Tyler, like, Tuesday even, if not Wednesday. But, anyways, uh... Onto the product... It comes in a nice box, I like that. It, uh... The one thing that amazed me, now I did cheat a little bit on this because I already opened it. Not cheat, but I didn't think to, uh... I opened it and then I was like, hey, I should do an unboxing of this because nobody's really got an unboxing of this on YouTube. So, I packaged it back up, wasn't much to packaging back it, it back up. But, so I've already seen it, but this is how it comes. It comes with a couple of brochures and, you know, a register. It comes with instructions. I don't say a whole hell of a lot. The actual product itself. It's very neat looking. It really has, it's, what will strike you about it more than anything to me is how incredibly tiny it is. I was kind of tipped off to this because I was looking at it at Academy last night. They had it on the shelves for 99 bucks, by the way. Although it does come with a high-rise mount at Academy. I mean, this is the high-rise mount that I got for it. <laughs> and mine came to 57 bucks, basically half the price. So, But uh, so I noticed how tiny it is at, at uh, Academy last night. 
or the other day, I don't remember when it was, and I looked at it. They had it on the shelf behind glass with all their other red dots. So I'm going bucks there to give you an example that it's actually a quality, you know, if you go buy this at a store, it's going to cost you 99 bucks. Uh, it's very small. You can almost think it, you know, best way to describe it is pretty much like a micro red dot, really. There's some pictures on Amazon that make it almost seem bigger than it is or something. It's very tiny. You know, this is how big it is. Very, very tiny. But it's very quality. It, it gives you a feeling immediately of quality, you know. It has a very quality workmanship feel to it. It just, it's neat. It has these rubber caps on it. Take them off. I have not mounted it, as I said. Here's the actual... I guess I can turn on the uh, red dot and see if you can see it. Yeah, there you go. I have not messed around too much with the red dot just yet. I have not messed around with the site at all yet. It has a sticker here that says some stuff about uh, pry it. You have to take this off. I already did this because I had already opened the site, remember. You have to take it off and pry out the battery. At first it was a little confusing, like what does that mean? I take it off and I use my trusty blade I got from Amazon as well for seven dollars or whatever it was, Tack Force. Uh, I have a video on that also on my channel. And I just popped it out, it's very simple. Right underneath there there's a little piece of plastic. It calls it a sticker, but it's really it wasn't an actual sticker. A little piece of plastic keeping it from contacting the uh, the contact there, so if you you know this this just confused me a little here at first about remove this cap and then pull sticker from bottom of battery prior to using elimination because I was like, am I supposed to pull this whole? You know I, I was see these little metal tabs I was trying to pull on them like does the whole thing come out or you know no you just get like a little knife or probably a butter knife or a finger it was in, it stuck in there pretty good so my finger didn't really work. At least tip of knife then it popped right out. You just popped that out. The battery not the the tabs are like what it's contacting. They are fixed in there, so. Just a little tip on that. And if I can screw this back on. Yeah, so it's like a micro red dot, like I said, very, very tiny. But I'm very excited to mount it. And try it out on my gun tomorrow. I haven't sh shot it. Obviously. I haven't even mounted it yet. It comes with this. The mount looks like this. In case you were wondering. I kind of was. Uh, it also comes with. A little. Cleaning cloth. Big deal. But most scopes do come with something like that. Microfiber cloth. And it comes with a little Allen wrench. Every optic I have comes with these. So I know I've got about like eight of them. <laughs> Well, I've got three optics plus I think a lot of the mounts I've bought come with one too. So I've got like four or five of these little. I keep them all in my shooting bag. So it's got the correct size Allen wrench to mount it. Here's the UTG mount I got. Nine bucks. Three slot high profile riser mount. This is the one everybody buys with the TRS-25. Hope the height is right. Worst case scenario, I'll have to buy the .83 inch one. I'm looking for a lower one-third co-witness because I think that's just going to be best for what I want to do. Or that's just what I want. I want the sights out of the way. Uh, I prefer, honestly, much prefer to uh, not have an A2 front post. I bought the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. It's in the, my other videos. And I really like how the, that has the rail on it and it has the long Picatinny rail. And it has no post front sight. It has fold down and it works a lot better with optics. It's a matter of preference. Some people like the front post sight. Some people don't. I would have to say that having seen a system where it doesn't have a front post sight, I think it's a lot more flexible. And people always say, oh yeah, but you want the uh, fixed fixed sights. You know, you don't want to have to flip them up. You, you need backup sight. Ah, to me, the odds of your red dot going out in some sort of situation are so slim. I mean, like if I had no known that was a thing once I got into these ARs and stuff I would have never thought of that as a thing you know what are the odds your red dots gonna go out in the middle of a firefight you know 
one in a thousand it's just not gonna happen and if it does happen you know i don't know point you know anything up to about 20 yards you can probably hit with pointing to be honest uh so yeah i mean i'm not a big believer in the but i think it's good to have backup iron sights with backup flip up backup sites are plenty some people think flip up backup sites are not enough you know or that in the middle of a firefight you ain't got time to flip them up oh come you know it could be but you know what i mean i mean it's a valid point i guess to a point but kind of skeptical on it i'm kind of skeptical that people say oh your battery could die or whatever when you're red i mean come on the odds of that are one in a million but uh but yeah, when I got the MMP 1522, I realized I like that I like that system of not having an A2 front post much better, because it just makes the optics clear and you know makes the red dot just all you gotta do is focus on the red dot. You don't have to worry about your post. So I'm trying to get a little closer to that with the lower one third co witness. So we'll see how it works with this riser and everything. Being interesting to see. And this is only the second red dot I've owned and the first quality red dot I've owned. And the first one being that cheapo Pinty. So I'm interested to see how much sharper the red dot is. You know, all those things. I read, I was blaming the Pinty having kind of a misshaped dot. You know, not perfectly circle. On the cheap optic, which it probably is. But somebody made a comment that if the dot is misshapen like that or it's a star or whatever. It can be because you have an astigmatism. And I don't wear glasses, but I don't have perfect sight either, you know. So I was wondering, that, that's interesting. We'll see how clear this and crisp this, this bush now seems to me. But yeah, I don't have a whole lot more to say on it. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited to try it out. And uh, I've been wanting this. Like I said, this is how I'm going to set up my AR now. I'm going to put this on it, and you know, I was wanting to make another comment, like, my AR is the Ruger AR556, I'm not into A, people always say, oh, you should build your own, I'm just not into ARs and shooting, I'm into them, but I'm not into them on that level, you know, yeah, maybe I'll get there, but I don't think I'll get there either, so I don't get all these people say, just build your AR, you know, like, like for example, if you build an AR, you need to get, you know, pick out the barrel. Well, I don't know what the hell kind of, you know, what the hell I'm looking for in a barrel. It's all Greek to me, you know. Oh, this one's chrome vanadium lined 1 in 37. Yeah, I know that's not a real thing, but, you know, twist with blah, 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 blah. And it's all Greek to me. I don't know what the fuck kind of, here's what I would look for in a barrel. Oh, yeah, I want the regular barrel, you know, the regular, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the regular AR-15 barrel. Yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, you see what I mean? I don't really... There's no point in me building an AR or whatever. So I got so out of the pre-made ARs that are, uh, well, I am learning about them. So I may eventually get to the point where I want to build one, but it's still a surface level. And it's still where I want to like change the AR that I have rather than build my own. And like I say, people always say, well, yeah, you know, first you'll want to change your the one you have, and so you might as well just build your own because eventually you want to do that. Well, maybe, but I don't think so. I honestly think I'll just you know, I don't think I'll get to that point. Uh, so yeah, this is the way I think I want to set up my, uh, I'm going to set up the lower one third co and this is the red dot. It's probably the way I'm pretty much going to leave it. That's going to be the optic on it. I have that sight on it, the ETG Bug Buster. I also did a video about that one. I had the scope. Which is nice and it's still there for backup. But I may buy another scope because I don't love the Bug Buster. I think the eye relief may not be ideal on it. Anyways, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna run it with the red dot for probably the foreseeable future. And the other things I'm gonna do to it probably eventually is change out the furniture like everybody does, mainly to get them gray. Uh, I love two tone ARs. Ruger sells this one in kind of a real light, almost whitish, but it's real light gray. Man, I love how it looks. It's just a regular AR, but for some reason it just, it's actually the receiver and stuff are gray on this thing. Not the whole thing is gray. Obviously, like, the barrel is gray and stuff. But it looks so nice to me. And I just want it. I wish I'd have got it instead of the Rue Gray R that I did get so badly. Love the color scheme on it. 
Nobody really makes furniture in that light of a gray. They kind of make it in a more boring, darker gray. But still, I think it's the closest I'm going to get. And, it's, it, and I can't make the receiver gray short of coating or something. So, but I think that if the stock's gray, the butt handle's gray, and the forend is gray, you know, that'll give me enough of the two-tone look that I want. At least it'll look cool, you know. And probably the magazine, I'll get a gray magazine, probably. I think I'll be pretty happy with that. And, you know, it'll be mostly for cosmetics, because I'm fine with what's on there, you know. But, uh, but it won't hurt, you know, and it'll probably be nicer. And that'll probably run about 100, 120 bucks. It seems like about 30 bucks, 30 to 40 bucks per piece, you know, for the stock, the handle, and the fore grip. It'll still have the AT post on, which I don't like, but in a way, I mean, I guess in a way I'm trying to come around to the positives on it. You know, people say that fixed front post is, is great because, you know, it's reliable, it's always there. I wish it wasn't, and I wish I had got a Smith & Wesson Optics Ready instead because it's about the same price. To me, the two main low-cost ARs are the Smith & Wesson and the Ruger. I love my Ruger, so I'm partial to it. It's what I got. It's, it hasn't jammed yet in probably four or 500 rounds. I love it. But they don't offer an Optics Ready one for a similar price. And Smith & Wesson does. So I might want to go with this. I mean, I might. I kind of wish I had got the Smith & Wesson, to be honest. Uh, now, you know, I didn't know enough at the time, you know. I didn't know a A2 post from the back of my ass, you know, at the time I ordered. Uh, but here's the thing, uh, you know, you're never going to get as much money out of a gun as you paid for it. Like, uh, I just sold my M&P 1522, I sold it for 250 cash, but I paid 300 online. And I also had to pay the FFL fee, which in that case was 30 because I went to a pawn shop near me that was a higher FFL fee than I normally pay. My normal guide charges 15 but this one time I went to some place closer to my house, but they ended up charging me 30 because I thought they were going to charge 20 and I was like, well, for five extra bucks, I'd rather, you know, it's much closer to my house. I mean, uh, but no, they ended up charging me 30 They were like, oh, yeah, that, that's an old price. It's actually 30 uh, You know, that was on their website. Well, thanks for updating your website, guys, but anyways... Uh, so yeah, so I ended up paying three thirty out the door for that Smith and Wesson, no shipping, no tax, and getting two fifty back. So you know, I paid eighty bucks to rent it for a few months. So basic, not bad or anything. But my point is, you're only gonna get. I think I read somewhere that you can probably generally expect to get about seventy five percent of what you paid for a, a gun when you sell it used, and that seems about right. That's if you're selling to a a, a person rather than a dealer. They're not gonna. A dealer's not going to give you crap for it. So my Ruger AR that I paid five seventy for, well, now they're going. Last I looked, anyway, online they were going for four fifty. So how much can I realistically expect if you can get one new for four fifty? That's the real limiter on what you're going to get for it, you know. So how much would I actually get for it? I'm assuming three fifty, you know. That's what I'm assuming it would be a, pretty much a fair price for it. That's what I'd pay for one, you know. If I know I can get one new for 450, I ain't paying more than 350 for a used one, you know. Or maybe, maybe more, but you know, just to be safe, I would assume I can only get 350. So I get 350 for the Ruger because I was actually thinking of doing this and getting the Smith and Wesson Optics Ready. Well, the Smith and Wesson Optics Ready, like I saw one for 479 online. But then you got to throw in, you know, uh, I don't know what exactly the current price is. Then you got to throw in your FFL fee. You know, you're looking at five. So you're losing 150. You say you pay a 500 for the Smith and Wesson, and you get 350 for the Ruger. I'm out 150 bucks just to get rid of my front post sight. Now there's other things you can do. You can remove the A2 front post, but I can't. I don't trust myself. I'm very OCD about such things. I want everything to be perfect, so I don't want to really mess with removing the front post myself. You know, uh, and putting on a different gas block and all that business. Plus, the gas blocks, as I understand it, the screw on ones are not necessarily as stable. And there's a certain advantage of having that pinned gas block, you know. Uh, instability and strength. So, 
So yeah, uh, just all things considered, for now I'm just going to leave the post. And uh, cause like I say, it's going to cost me to to get rid of it one way or the other, you know. And if I get rid of it and I put a free floating handguard, my dad can help me with doing that. Because he's really into ARs and he has all the tools and stuff and he knows what he's doing. But then you get into the, you're still going to have to pay for the free floating handguard, pay for the new gas it's still gonna either way be 100 150 bucks 150 probably to get rid of that pesky a2 post so is it worth it i don't know for now i mean i love my ruger so for now i'm just going to uh keep building on it and if i get the magpul furniture i can always switch it to say if i get a different ar later so yeah so once you know i think if i put the red dot on and I put the gray furniture on, which I haven't gotten and don't plan on purchasing anytime real soon. But, you know, especially since it's mainly just a cosmetic change and spending a hundred bucks to cosmetically change your AR seems a little frivolous, you know? <laughs> or like, hell, that's half the price of some guns, you know? You can get some decent guns like a, a Ruger 10-22 or something for 200 bucks, you know? <laughs> You're paying half of that, probably more than half. I bet you it's going to come to more like 120, not 100, just to make your give your AR a different look, really. Because I don't really give a shit about the different stock, different handguard. Even it's like somebody said, like, "Ooh, this handguard has a heat shield." They're like, if you're if you're not firing a whole lot, you know, you're never going to need a heat shield. You know, <laughs> no, no normal shooter needs a heat shield. I don't. You know, I just take it to the range and plink every once in a while. I never noticed, you know, like the hand guard getting hot, you know. So they look cool, but there's nothing I really need on them. So I would be spending a hundred plus dollars just to look cool, which is okay, but anyway, so yeah, that, that's my plan with my AR. Put this red dot on it, get this thing sighted in, probably gonna take it shooting tomorrow. Weather's supposed to be nice. Where I live, about seventy and sunny. Probably take it to the range and get it sighted in tomorrow, probably. You know, not, not for sure. You never know what could come up, but and uh, get it, get it on there, get it, get it looking good. Then at that point, about the only thing I want to do after that is get that furniture, and I'll be pretty much set. Have my AR customized the way I want. It sure is fun to customize these ARs. I see now why they're so addictive. You know, and why they're so popular. But yeah, that's an unboxing of the Bushnell TRS-25 from Amazon.